So in this video, you're going to learn how to build a single bucket sub-irrigation planter bucket. For this, you need a five gallon bucket, a drill gun, a three quarter inch a lid for the bucket, a three quarter inch drill bit, a one quarter inch drill bit, and a two and three eighths inch circular drill bit. Uh, 16 inch by 24 inch cotton towel, needs to be 100% cotton, uh, ripped into three strips, a simple sponge, and this is a net pot. It's a three and a half inch diameter net pot. It's about three inches high. As a little side comment, we're using a net pot here, but you do not have to use a net pot. That's, this might be used as a specialty item. Uh, not every store carries net pots. Hydroponic stores do, of course, but this is kind of a hybrid between hydroponics and regular uh, gardening, so uh, soil-based gardening. So with if you don't have a net pot, you can use a small planting pot of similar size, about three inches high. It might be a, a one or two cup, one pint planting pot. Or it could be, uh, I've seen people use hummus containers just something that's sturdy enough to support weight above it because you will have the lid on top of this net pot with all of the weight of the soil above that lid. And so it needs to have enough structure to be able to support weight above it as well as you need to be able to cut holes in this side because we're going to thread the towels through the side of that so that you can have the wicking motion bringing the water from the reservoir up into the soil above it. First thing you do is to take the lid you take a quarter in your two and three eighths inch drill bit and you drill a hole in the middle. And you take the quarter inch drill bit and drill about 24 holes around the middle. It does not really matter the pattern, 24, 25, it's sufficient. The middle is where the, the wicking is going to come through. And then the side holes is where the plant roots have the option of dropping down and in the water if they get that big. Last thing you do is you take snips and you, or scissors and you cut around the perimeter of the lid so that all you have is a smaller lid that can fit down into the bottom of the bucket. Next you take the bucket with your three quarter inch drill bit on the drill gun. You drill a three quarter inch hole near the bottom of the bucket. One easy way to gauge it is it's kind of below the hole. It doesn't have to be exact. And the distance from the bottom is about the distance from the web of your hand all the way up to the tip of your thumb. And you do a quarter inch hole with the same kind of measurement. So it's at the tip of your thumb, the tip of your thumb. And that is how you're going to use that hole to fill the reservoir, the bigger one. The smaller hole is a drain so that if it get overflows and it can, as you fill up with the hose, if it gets too full, you see coming out the smaller hole and that keeps it from flooding. Then you take the net pot. And with the scissors, you cut little holes in the side. One, two, three. And this is where the towel will thread through so that it acts as a wicking device, kind of like a candle wick. Then you cut a hole in the bottom of the sponge and you take the three strips of towel and thread it through the hole in the bottom of the sponge as so. And then you push that through the lid as so. And then you thread those through the net pot, the little holes in the sides of the net pot, as so. Now as you can see here, we have at the bottom the net pot where the little holes were cut out. We pull the towel through that. This will sit at the bottom of the, of the bucket. All of this section will be underwater. This will wick the water up through the net pot, through the hole in the middle of the bucket lid, that is now the barrier between the soil and the water reservoir. The sponge will help with the wicking motion as well. Then it'll travel up the cotton cloth into the soil. and will absorb into the soil on both sides of each piece of cotton cloth, on the front and on the back. And these will be on the inside of the bucket, going from the bottom all the way up to the tippy top and that's how you'll keep constant moisture in the bucket. You'll water it down at the bottom and it'll wick it up to the top. And that way you use between 80 and 90 percent less water
because instead of the water falling on top and only sinking partially down before evaporating, the water goes in at the bottom, hits the roots, gets absorbed by the plant as it circulates up in the soil, and then aside from what's in the towel, very little actually escapes through evaporation from the soil. As you notice, the towels go through, they reach the bottom. The little wick is act as a wicking agent, so I'm going to drop that inside the bucket. Rest the towels on the corners. Now you have the bottom of the reservoir, actually the barrier between the reservoir, which used to be the lid. The sponge helps with a wicking motion while blocking dirt from falling down. You have the holes for the roots to grow through and get down to the water if they get that big. And then the towel acts as the wick, bringing the water up into the soil that we're going to place inside the bucket. Here's a view on the inside of the bucket. So you see the lid, little towels coming out. See how they touch the bottom. So when you fill it with water, it'll just act like a little wick and suck it right up and push it up into the soil above. As you add soil, you'll just want to push it. On top of the lid. Have it go behind the wicking. And that way as I sit on top of the soil, it'll get wet on both sides, behind it and in front of it. And you'll notice that the sponge does a good job of keeping the dirt from dropping down into the water reservoir. So that I'm using is actually mushroom compost because I can get it for free. You can use potting soil, you can use dirt from your backyard if it, you feel it has enough nutrients in it. With this, it does not have to be carefully, specially prepared wicking soil because the towel does a wicking motion for you. Any soil you think will grow stuff is good enough to use. Regardless of where the source of soil is, you'll probably want to add rock dust that will add the minerals into the soil so that your plants create a lot of uh, plant sugars using the minerals and that's what they measure as your sweetness. They measure that as your bricks level, as the amount of plant sugars that the plant has. They need minerals to do that. Most of our soils in our yards or even at the stores are depleted, completely depleted of minerals. A good source of minerals is just rock dust. There's several different brands. One of the best ones is Azomite. It's spelled A-Z-O-M-I-T-E. You can get that in many locations. On top of that, you want to add bacterial life to the soil, especially if you buy it at the store. It has to be sterilized. To add microbial life, because uh, microbes is what fixate the nitrogen and push it into the roots of the plants. You can do that using what are called worm castings, probably the best source of, of microorganisms. Or manure will accomplish the same thing. Um, worm tea, compost tea, compost adds microbes as well. Microorganisms, the beneficial microorganisms. The third component you might want to consider adding to your soil in order to make it super soil is mycorrhizal spore. Those are the spore of fungi that have a beneficial relationship with the roots of the plants as they grow. And they will actually expand the root mass of the plants up to a thousand times in terms of the surface area. And so they will be able to fixate nutrients in the soil that the plant's roots naturally could not access. So by adding rock dust, some sort of microbial life, either through compost, manure, compost tea, manure tea, worm castings, worm tea, any of those sources are great sources for adding microbes into the soil. And then adding mycorrhizal spore so that you can, so plants can uptake a lot more nutrients. You will have vastly superior plant growth and much sweeter plants and they'll be more hardy, more disease resistant, and will actually grow throughout a longer season when most plants stop growing. As we continue adding soil here, you'll notice I'm leaving a little bit of space behind, a little bit of space in front. When you're about halfway full, you can lay them sideways. Still kind of keep them up so that we can fill up more soil. We're just creating a spiraling motion, so the spiraling upwards, wicking moisture along with it as they go. With a little bit of space in the middle because that's where the root ball is going to be most concentrated as it then branches out to access water from all the different points. Okay, so I've added a few more shovelfuls. I'm going to lay them down sideways because they're near the top. From the little triangle as you can see, 
and then we're going to finish filling up with soil on top of that. And as you can tell, we're almost there. And just put a little bit of dirt on top of the last little bit. So we don't really care if the top of the soil is moist. What we care about is that the bottom of the soil is moist. So we're going to put dirt on the very top. And the dirt on the top may appear dry. If you stick your finger in, you'll notice that all the soil underneath is nice and moist. It doesn't matter how dry or how hot it gets during the day. After you feel like you filled it up enough, you just make a little bit of space in the middle. You can see where the towels are right there. Just make a little bit of space. You grab the seedling out of the little container you have it in. Just drop it down in there. Cent make sure it's centered. Maybe add a little bit more soil around the base. Tuck it in, add a few more scoops of soil. That way you have a nice, well established plant. This happens to be a tomato, you can grow corn, you can grow squash, you can grow a combination of corn and squash and green beans. The buck is big enough, can hold the root mass, has plenty of water, and they call that the three sisters. In this case, it's a tomato plant. plant doesn't have to be that tall. We have some that are really short, only two inches high. So this one's a little bit bigger than most of the other ones that we planted. Now to fill it with water, all you do is get your hose, turn it on, stick it in. It's filling. We keep our eye right here. We're gonna have about maybe a gallon of water down there. So we keep pressure on this side, it fills up. Okay, keep our eye right there, small hole on the side. Still filling. Oh, there it goes, it's full. And that's the overflow valve. That way you don't waste water and it doesn't overfill.